Uh, but today we shall be looking at the kinds of damaging excuses. The kinds of damaging excuses. There are different kinds of uh, excuses, but we are going to kind of uh, focus on the excuses that can cause damages that um, we don't want to see in our lives. The whole essence of the word of God that comes to us all the time why God speaks to us is to shield us, is to protect us from every uh, experiencing any danger, any problem, any evil uh, that uh, might, you know, uh, be directed at us one way or the other. And so this is what we are going to look at today. Uh, many times we hear, um, or rather all the time we hear excuses. We keep on hearing excuses, especially if you are in leadership. If you're leading any group or department in your uh, your place of work or at home or anywhere, uh, you will always find and hear excuses, uh, different kinds of excuses coming to you. Um, you know, I was just wondering how much excuses God gets every moment of the day. Uh, it's like God is, you know, every second that passes by God, uh, excuse comes, excuses comes to God, you know, like a flood, you know, comes to God from every direction uh, of human beings. And so God himself is getting excuses and excuses and excuses every day and all that. So people have uh, all forms of uh, uh, excuses for not accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Uh, if you speak to, if you were to speak to somebody uh, to get born again, they will find excuses and tell you this reason or that reason. That is why, you know, they don't want to accept the Lord. Either they tell, give you the excuse directly or indirectly, but they are still giving you some excuse why they don't want to be born again or they are not ready to be born again. Otherwise, they will immediately accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, the gospel is true. The gospel is true. The Lord Jesus Christ is the truth. And so when you're giving somebody the truth and uh, the person is giving you excuse, there's something seriously wrong. So in other words, that person is actually brooding a dangerous situation in their lives if they don't get to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, be before they die. And so you find that many other areas are uh, people give excuses and that can be very damaging to them or things around them. And so that is why as believers, we also have to be careful and know uh, that there are excuses that can be very damaging. And so we have to steer off clear those kind of things so that we don't want any problems uh, in our lives. Excuses can become, uh, can become a disease. Excuses can become a disease um, or a habit uh, that can become very difficult to overcome. And uh, so if it becomes a disease, that what happens that it, when so, somebody has a disease, the disease is eating uh, that person's life or uh, damaging that person's life. And so we don't want uh, the uh, excuses that are like diseases uh, that we're carrying all the time. Each time we pop up an excuse and yet it's causing some probably unseen damages in our lives. And that's, those are the kind of things we want to avoid as God's people, as God's children. An excuse is a reason or explanation are uh, offered as a ground to lessen a blame or to defend or to justify a fault or failure. And so we often knowingly or unknowingly, we try to offer explanation uh, to uh, to lessen the grounds of maybe consequences of something that we have done or something that we have not done. And so that is, you know, the, how we try to define excuses last time we met. There are quite a few things that seem so helpful, uh, but can actually be very destructive. There are many things we exercise, we use, or we do in life that can seem helpful, uh, seem very good, but those things can be very damaging. They can be actually uh, very destructive. And that is why we have to uh, be able to design those things and stay away from those things. Many people in life will see that uh, you nobody wants to go close to fire because you know the fire will burn you 
And so uh, let's look at some of the damaging excuses or excuses that can be damaging uh, one way or the other in our lives. And maybe we might find that, oh, I've been doing this for quite some time. I didn't even know uh, it can be damaging. I didn't even know it was, it's not a good thing uh, to, you know, give this kind of excuses. And so we're going to take a look at some of the kinds of uh, excuses that can be self-destructive or can be very damaging. Number one is usually Usually is what, I, what we call uh, excuses for self-protection. Um, as human beings, we want to build around a wall or shield or protection around ourselves uh, so that um, the certain thing doesn't penetrate or attack us one way or the other. And so uh, excuses is one of the things that we use as a shield or as a wall around ourselves. Though we may not even be aware that uh, we are using that excuse to shield ourselves as a protection protection around ourselves. So that is something that we need to recognize. It, the, what kind of protection do we protect ourselves? Uh, do we seek when uh, we are giving excuses for this kind of protection? Number one is the fear of failure or rejection. When somebody has a fear of failure, or fear of rejection, then what sometimes what comes out is an excuse uh, so that you're not regarded as a fail in certain things or you don't feel uh, rejection. And so you give excuses about certain things. And uh, we see the same kind of thing in the life of Moses. Uh, God called Moses. Moses had failed once. We see that Moses had failed once and he ran away. He became a fugitive. And then when God was telling him, I want to use you. I want to send you back to Egypt. Immediately, Moses began to protect himself with excuses and began because he doesn't want to fail again. Uh, he doesn't want to experience rejection again. And he began to tell God, no, I am not interested. And he began to give excuses, uh, excuses upon excuses to God for not accepting the uh, assignment. Uh, secondly, uh, sometimes ex these excuses are meant to shield or to boost our self-esteem. Uh, sometimes we feel that uh, we have a low self-esteem of ourselves and we give excuses uh, so that we can boost our, uh, we can shield our self-esteem so that uh, if there's any attack on our self-esteem, we will not be affected or we want to boost our self-esteem. Uh, so that is something that we do consciously or unconsciously. Again, when a a person is unable uh, to undertake a task. Uh, he he would not admit it, readily admit it, but he would uh, give excuses and say, because of this, I'm not, I wouldn't do it. Because of that, I wouldn't do it. Uh, the reason, the main reason behind the whole thing is uh, they, are, they feel they are unable to undertake the task before them. So they don't want to say, no, I can't do this. So they give excuses. And so the thing is, remember Moses. Moses felt he was not he was not able to do or carry out the task that God was giving to him. And so he began to give excuses upon excuses upon excuses. And so people don't usually uh, accept the fact that they are or admit that they are not able to do certain things. And so they give excuses that uh, uh, why they don't want to do it. And that excuse is not actually the real thing. And you can imagine Moses giving excuses. In the wonderful thing, the great thing that God wanted to do through his life uh, to save a whole nation. And so if God was about to do something through your life, God was about to use you to do something and you go ahead and uh, because of the fear uh, of failure, because of fear, you're not, you think you cannot do it and you begin to give excuses upon excuses upon excuses. And so that's the kind of thing that we face. So that kind of thing can be very damaging and destructive in a person's life. Maybe it could be something that will actually bring your, your life into a greater, uh, a greater achievement in your life. And because of the fear that is there, you began to give excuses and then you run away from what God wants to, the blessing that God wants to bring uh, into your life. And so that is why we say it is damaging excuses. It is God who actually protects us. Excuses cannot truly protect us. It is God 
who can truly protect every area of our lives. And that is something that we must have uh, in our mind. Uh, when some when we are giving excuses, uh, we must remember and deal with the fears that we have and know that God is on our side and we cannot of our own protect ourselves. It is God who protects us, who watches over us in every area of our life. We see uh, this similar kind of thing happening uh, in the life of um, King Saul. Uh, the Bible tells us in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15, we're going to be looking at uh, a few times uh, in our uh, meeting today. Uh, Saul, uh, the Bible tells us that Saul disobeyed God uh, and he violated what God told him to do. And then he began to give excuses upon excuses. So if you read verse 24, I'll read in verse 24. In verse 24 says, Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I violated the Lord's command and your instructions. I was afraid of men, and so I gave in to them. So we see Saul here, he's with, he, what he did, the excuses he gave was not the main problem. The main problem was he was afraid of men. The fear of men was the thing was... Uh, pushing him to give the excuses that he was giving. And then he gave, he said he gave in uh, to them, to the, the fear of man. And then he disobeyed God and uh, refused the instruction given to him by the man of God. And so that is the kind of thing that happens. And so we see that ultimately uh, this was very costly. This was very expensive mistake made by King Saul, and he lost his throne, he lost everything, and he was living, you know, that meant disobedience to God. And so that is why we say this is damaging. Uh, it can be very, the excuses we give sometimes can be very damaging, and we see it, it caused a great damage uh, to uh, King Saul at that time. A uh, second thing that we look at is uh, justification or rationalization. Uh, we also see Saul was uh, trying to justify his actions or rationalize his actions to make it look as if what he did was correct. And uh, we read again in 1 Samuel in uh, chapter 15, uh, we read in verse 30 and 31, 1 Samuel. Then he said, I have seen Yet honor me now, please, before the elders of my people and before Israel, and return with me that I may worship the Lord your God. So Samuel turned back after Saul, and Saul worshiped the Lord. So what we see here, Samuel, uh, Saul is saying and uh, uh, beg, literally begging, uh, Samuel are uh, to honor him before the people. In other words, his main concern was he needed people. He needed to be honored before people. He needed to be uh, to be honored and uh, made look good before people. And we don't. The reality is that we must not seek to look good before people and look bad before God. Our desire and our 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 desire and our pursuit must be uh, to look go good before God. And if we look good before God, nothing else should matter to us. But here what we see is that um, King Saul wanted to look good before keep people. And he said, I have sinned, I have sinned, yet honor me. In other words, though I have sinned, but I still need you to honor me. Now, please before the elders of my people and before Israel. In other words, he was more concerned about uh, pleasing people. He was more concerned about looking good before the elders, before the, 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 the people uh, in the land, rather than looking good before God. And so because of this, he had excuses upon excuses. And so that is something that we must learn from uh, in everything that we do in life. Our desire our pursuit, our passion must be to please God in everything that we are doing. It doesn't really matter if somebody doesn't feel pleased, but as long as we have pleased God, 
in what we are doing and that is what matters and God will take care of the rest of the things. It doesn't really matter what is happening around you, but as long as you are in the good books of God, that is what is important. Whatever comes your way, whatever the enemy is trying to throw at you, whatever the people are trying to throw at you, uh, God will take care of that. It is God. The real and the true elevation comes from God. It does not come from man. And so we must always seek not to justify with excuses, not to rationalize with excuses, but we must learn uh, to please God and to, and to please God in everything, in every area of our life. The third thing that, I will, that we'll be talking about is what I call ancestral or genetic excuses. Ancestral or genetic excuses. It's like saying, this has been going on for four generations in my family. This has been going on for four generations or many generations in my community. Uh, in other words, it is beyond my control. I have accepted it as a way of life, as part of life. In other words, I don't expect any change to take place. Uh, because So you are giving that it becomes an ancestral excuse or genetic excuse. In other words, you are saying this cannot change. We will remain, we will continue to give these excuses. All my life, I'm going to be giving this excuse uh, all the days of my life. I have no... I'm not going to rectify it. it. There's nothing that can be rectified. There's nothing that can be rectified about this. So I will continue to uh, live uh, the way I'm living. I'm going to, this is going to continue to be an excuse for whatever, whenever issues like this come up. Uh, this problem or habit or bad behavior runs uh, in the family or runs in the community. I can't do anything about it. This is actually giving up before even making any effort to make uh, bring about a change. A good example we read uh, in the Bible is the story of Jabez that we find in First Corinth uh, Chronicles uh, chapter four verse, verses nine and ten. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. So the question we must first ask ourselves is why was Jabez more honorable than his brothers? Were his brothers giving excuses and excuses? And Jabez refused to go by that generational excuse. He goes on to say, his mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. In other words, there was a problem that has been in the family. And Jabez recognized that. Jabez was born in that pain, in that problem. And so, but Jabez did not take carry that as an excuse. He did something about it. In verse 10, he says, Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm, so that I will be free from pain. Remember, he was born in pain. He wanted to be free from that pain. And so he was not, he did not continue to give excuses on that pain. And the Bible says, and God granted his request. God heard and answered his prayers. And that is something that we should be doing. Maybe some, you say to yourself, oh, this has been taking place here for a long time. There is not going to be a change. Oh, this has been running in the family for a long time. This is, there's not going to be a change. Uh, this is what my community believes in. Uh, this is not, there's nothing I can do about it. No, you can do something about it. Uh, you can pray to God. You can begin to look up to God for a change. Let that damaging excuse not become an excuse that you continue to give. Uh, something that has been carried of, on over generations and you know it is not benefiting you. It is not benefiting your community. It's time to stop it. It's time to move ahead. It's time to go to greater things. Uh, Jabez was born in pain, but he said, no, no more pain for me. No more pain for my family. I'm going to move from this place. I'm not going to give excuses about this again. And that is how Jabez, God had, Jabez took it to the presence of God and God erased the past and gave them a new future. And so Jabez, is now a new person enjoying a new 
generational blessing uh, in his life. And so that is something that we must put in our mind, we must keep in our mind. Ancestral, there can be ancestral or genetic excuses. And you are giving, you may be giving those excuses, those genetic or ancestral excuses. Uh, you may be giving that continuously and you're happy giving it. You don't see the problem with it, but uh, the reality is that there is a problem with that kind of thing, and we must uh, go away from such a thing and not uh, continue to give such excuses. Another thing that we need to uh, look into is um, excuses uh, that are blaming the circumstances around you. Sometimes uh, we blame the circumstances around us, and you might even have uh, played a role in the problem, but you're not looking at the role that you have played. And so, but you choose to blame the circumstances. And so, uh, the circumstances may be only a, maybe a small percentage, a small percentage of the, of the whole problem, but you have, uh, because it's easier to blame the circumstance rather than blame your, yourself or blame your, the mistakes that you have made. And so it's very easy and it can become like a, like a song that we're blaming the circumstances, blaming the circumstances. You see, I was born in this place. I was born in this place or I live in this place. And so I, there's no chance for me and things like that. I cannot get better than this. And so we use that as an excuse, as an excuse and as, a, as, as an excuse. And we keep on singing that to ourselves as a song. And so we begin to believe those things. And uh, though we don't, we don't even realize that they are destructive. They are stopping us from moving forward. Uh, that is the same kind of thing that we see Moses doing. Moses has probably seen himself. He says, "I've been, I've tried this before, and I've been doing this job of a shepherd at desert in the village for I, you know, for almost forty years now. How can I really make a change? You know, and so." Uh, he has uh, blame on circumstances. This is the story of my life. I'm just going to stay here. I don't want to go back there again. I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, I tried it once and it didn't work out. Let me just remain where I am. And so we blame circumstances. Maybe you have, you have failed once. Uh, you have not succeeded once, but that doesn't mean you cannot try again. A God will always bring victory in our lives if we look up to him, if we go back to him. And so God is able to change our things in our lives, even, even though things might not, have, might not have happened well in our life. The circumstances may not be something, uh, but God can change even those circumstances. Uh, we read in the Bible about Esau. Esau had the excuse of hunger. And because he was very hungry, he was just coming from work and he was very hungry. And he had the excuse of, because of hunger, as an excuse, he sold his birthright. And when we read the Bible, we see that God was not happy with this man who sold his birthright. But his excuse that was that he was hungry and he sold his birthright. And so the circumstances caused him uh, to sell his birthright and the, he is given excuse because of the circumstances. That is why he sold his birthright. Uh, so this one is not uh, a very uh, easy thing. It is much easier to blame uh, you know, the circumstances uh, and the problems uh, that we have sometimes than to blame ourselves. So let us look carefully into a situation around us look into the circumstances and if there are blames that are you know that should not be there we should you know keep those blames aside they can be uh, sometimes very destructive and so that we can be able to move forward irrespective of whatever the circumstances is god is able to change the circumstances in our life uh the fourth and the fifth thing that i want us to uh, look at today as we get close to uh, rounding up is shifting blame uh, on something, shifting blame on something as an excuse. Uh, many times we, like I said before, we don't blame ourselves. It is easy to blame uh, something. 
it is easy to blame something uh, and we give excuses about something. We don't want to blame ourselves. We don't want to say, oh, I made this mistake. Oh, I should have done it this way. I should have done it that way. No, we don't say that. Uh, we look for something uh, that probably played a role in the whole thing. Uh, we we blame that thing uh, as a problem. Why you know we are going through what we're going through? Why the problem is there? And so that let's look at the the life of Saul, King Saul. Uh, if you would turn with me to First Samuel chapter fifteen again, and in verse fifteen, I will read. It says, "And Saul said, They have brought them." from the Amalekite. They have brought them from the Amalekite. Saul is talking about uh, all the sheep or the cattle and the, and the thing that he took away uh, where God sent him uh, to destroy everything. He took booty. He took things from there. And uh, when the prophet confronted him, he said, they brought, he didn't say about himself, he said, they brought them from the Amalekites. For the people spared the best of the sheep. Why? To sacrifice to the Lord, to do make sacrifices unto the Lord our God, your God, and the rest we utterly destroyed. So Saul is giving excuse, King Saul is giving excuse here. What is his excuse? Is that they preserve those cattle, those animals, so that they can make sacrifices. So it's giving an excuse about some sacrifice, about something that they wanted. He, he, he feels it's he, they wanted to do to God, a sacrifice they wanted to uh, give to God. You know, this sounds spiritual. It sounds spiritual. Uh, but the reality, it, it is the most unspiritual thing. Sometimes we think something is spiritual, and we even use spiritual language. But the reality, it is that is that those things may be the most unspiritual thing in the eyes of God. And so Saul meets the uh, the prophet Samuel and he says to the prophet, uh, I will preserve this thing so we can sacrifice to our God. We can sacrifice to your God. And that sounds spiritual, but Paul, you know, uh, sorry, uh, the prophet Samuel was very, very disgusted to hear this. That is sometimes one some some of the things that we do. We 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 use spiritual language to cover uh, the mistakes that we made, and then we give excuses about certain things that we want to make it look as if it's good in the eyes of God. But the reality that we must be able we must uh, remember uh, to decipher what is good, what is acceptable before the presence of God, and what is not acceptable. Remember, not everything is acceptable to God. And so in this case, uh, it was not acceptable to God. And that is how and how damaging that was for uh, this uh, king, King Saul. And so another thing that I wanted to quickly uh, touch is uh, uh, blaming others as an excuse. When uh, Adam sinned against God after the fall, they ate the, uh, he ate the, of the tree, of the fruit of the tree, he should not eat. And when God came down to meet him and talk to him, and then what was, he gave an excuse. What was that excuse? He says, the man whom you gave me to be with me, she gave me the fruit to eat. So we see that Adam had an excuse after sinning against God, after disobeying God. He had an excuse. He didn't just want to acknowledge and say, oh, oh I'm wrong. I did something wrong. But instead of acknowledging, admitting that he has done something wrong, he gave an excuse. He says, the woman you gave to me was the one who gave me the fruit to eat. So the question that I you know, was thinking about is, uh, if I were to ask Adam, I said, did your wife push down the fruit into your mouth? Or did she uh, make you eat the fruit at gunpoint? No, the answer is no. It was his choice. He accepted, uh, Adam accepted the fruit uh, of the tree and ate it of his own will without anybody forcing him uh, to do that. Sometimes people blame others for their mistakes. And they use that as an excuse for wrong, you know, to cover up their wrongdoing. You know, they look for something that's connected to somebody and blame that person, blame the other person for their mistakes or something they have done wrong. And uh, that is an excuse. 
Uh, remember, God is the one who is watching all things, and God does not accept that kind of excuse. Uh, King Saul did similar things. We turn again to 1 Samuel chapter 15, uh, 1 Samuel, Samuel chapter 15, and we'll read from verse 13 to 16. 1 Samuel chapter 15, and we'll read from 13 to 16. I'll read from verse 13. It says, Then Samuel went to Saul, and Saul said to him, Blessed are you of the Lord. I want you to look at the picture here. The Samuel, the prophet Samuel, went to Saul after the Lord had spoken to Samuel that uh, Saul had disobeyed him and uh, Samuel was disgusted and uh, angry and unhappy about the whole thing. And uh, he went to Saul. And the moment Saul saw him, all he began to do is to uh, speak spiritual language. Blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the commandments of the Lord. In his mind or in his a uh, willingness or desire to deceive. He says, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. In other words, whatever God told me to destroy, I've destroyed the whole city. I've destroyed the people. In his mind, he had been obedient to God in doing whatever God wanted him to do. And then verse 14, he says, But Samuel said, What then is the bleating of the sheep in my ears and the, low, and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? Verse 15, and Saul said, they have brought them from the Amalekite, for the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. I wanted to look and see here, Saul is saying, they have brought them, who is they? The soldiers and other people. For the people have spared the best of the sheep. Who is the commander in chief? Who is the leader of Israel? Who is the leader of the of the army of Israel? It was Saul. And he was the one who, who actually took aside all those things, who commanded these things to be taken. He did not uh, command them to destroy everything. And so uh, he was now not just telling lies, but giving excuses. He was blaming others. He, the excuse was blaming other people and putting the responsibility on other people rather than himself, rather than uh, taking up re uh, 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 responsibility for what he has done. And then in verse 16, uh, the Bible says that then Samuel said to Saul, be quiet. I will tell you what the Lord has said to me last night. I will tell you what the Lord I said to me last night. And so we see here, Saul is, is just, you know, kind of giving excuses and the excuses was damaging to him than anybody else. Though he was uh, blaming other people, but the excuses he was giving was not damaging to him, to other people. It was damaging to himself. He says that they have, uh, they have, the people have, in other words, he was shifting the blame on other people. If you will turn with me in verse uh, 20 uh, to 22, it says, And Saul so said to Samuel, But I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone to and gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me and brought back Agag, the king of Amalek. I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites, but the people took of the plunder. He says, The people took the plunder, not himself. When Paul, when Samuel went to see him, he could hear the sound of the sheep and the oxen in his house, not in the house of those people that he's trying to blame. And the best of the things we did, uh, which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. And so Samuel, so Samuel said in verse 22, has the Lord a great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord your God. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. So we see here, uh, despite the fact that uh, Saul was trying to blame other people as an excuse, but the blame came back on him. And so we must always think twice when we are putting the blame of things that we have done against other people. Maybe those people were there 
Maybe those other people that you're trying to put this, uh, uh, put this blame on, they were kind of involved in some way or the other, but the respons if the responsibility is yours, it should continue to be yours. And you are the one to take the responsibility. No matter how much you shift the blame, but in the sight of God, the individual is still to blame. He's the one giving the excuse. And it can be very damaging to that very individual, like we see in the life of Saul. I want us to know that excuses or lies, sometimes an excuse can be a lie. Excuses or lies may open a temporary door. But we must remember that it is the, it is when the Lord opens a door, no man can shut. You may be giving an excuse so that a door can be opened. Something wonderful can happen to you. Something great can you know, happen. Open doors can be opened. But the reality is that that door that you open with excuses can close. But if the, if the Lord opens a door for you, no man can shut it. If the Lord opens a door for you, no man can shut it. And that is something uh, as we uh, take a look at this message, that's something that I would uh, encourage us to, you know, before, you know, you make excuses, uh, it is very important for us to reflect on the consequence of the excuse that we are making. And so that is um, where we're going to stop there today. We still have a lot on this damaging excuses to cover, uh, but we are going to stop here today and we're going to Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just reflect on the on the thing that the Lord has spoken to you. Uh, let us all pray. 